Hi, so I'm Hannah Sackett. I'm a cartoonist and an educator, and I've worked on three comics relating to the Spellbound exhibition. The comics are um, The Magician's Lament. I uh, worked on this with Sophie Page from UCL. Um, the next one is A Most Certain Strange and True Guide to Witchcraft, which I worked on with Malcolm Gaskell from UEA. And the final one is The Keepers in the House, which I worked on with Owen Davis and Kerry Holbrook um, from the University of Hertfordshire. Okay, so there's three different comics each relating to um, the different rooms and different themes um, of the exhibition and the Inner Lives research. And um, for each comic, I, um, I wanted them to feel different. And I like to work with the art style of the period um, that I'm doing um, comics in. So um, The Magician's Lament is based on uh, medieval manuscripts. The um, witchcraft comic is based on pamphlets and broadsides um, from the 17th century. And then The Keepers of the House um, is inspired by patchwork um, and folk art. To begin with, I would come up with an idea for each comic. I would look at the research done um, by each of the researchers and hit on something that kind of interested me. And I thought, oh, that's, that's fascinating. How can I take that forward? Um, the first one I worked on was the witchcraft comic. I had this kind of clear idea for doing a kind of guide on what to do, um, how to find a witch, or what to do if you've been accused of being a witch. Um, so that was the first idea. And so I drafted out um, a comic, which I sent to Malcolm to look at. So this is very sketchy to begin with, with uh, panels not all filled in, but just looking at how the structure of the, of the comic is going to work with the, with the ideas for the text. And then um, each time I, I did a draft for each one and the academics would get back to me with, with feedback saying, yes, I like this, but mm, can we change this? Um, oh, that's more, so Malcolm would say, oh, that's more usually used for identifying a witch rather than punishing a witch, so can we move that earlier in the comic? And um, they would send me picture references and things, so we'd use my basic one and then we'd move forward, I'd create um, a more detailed design, a finalised design, and then once everyone was happy with the layouts and the content, um, I moved on to uh, making the artwork. Um, so for each one, I made the artwork for the witchcraft and the medieval ones. These were done in a uh, dip pen. So um, I've got ink and a dip pen, which I used. So I drew in um, a non-photo blue pencil um, here, which um, doesn't appear if you scan the image in. So I drew in pencil, went over and dip pen. This then gets scanned in um, to the computer and then I work in Photoshop, uh, tidying up the images, colouring the images, and then using either Photoshop or InDesign to create the pages, which are then sent off to be printed. The key thing is really the development stage. It's working with the academics that to and fro from the original idea through to really making sure that I'm presenting their research, that I haven't got any factual inaccuracies, that I've got the sense of the period that I'm working with, um, that they know so well. And then I guess the fun bit for me is once that, that kind of process of development's over, then I just get to play with ink and put the comic together. <laughs> okay, so that's how it works. Okay, I had some knowledge of them. Um, I studied archaeology um, at university and I've studied some history as well. Um, and I've just got an interest in these things. So um, I guess I knew a fair amount about witchcraft. Um, and I've been interested in things hidden in houses for a while. Now, once I, I heard about, um, quite some years ago now, about um, clothes and fabric and things being, shoes and things being hidden in houses. and that's, um, that's always interested me. Um, I think, I guess I knew sort of less about the actual details of the medieval magic and 
cosmos, um, only kind of what I've acquired from reading kind of filters into fantasy, <laughs> you know, novels and films and things, which sometimes that's accurate and sometimes it's wildly inaccurate. So um, it was really fascinating to read um, Sophie's um, research and, and uh, understand that more fully. Okay, I've got piles of things. They sent me lots of lovely things. Um, so for the medieval comic, um, there was a piece of writing that Sophie sent me that was talking about the development of, of magic um, in the medieval period. And it was particularly um, her, her discussion of how magic had been part of, of science and the understand, growing understanding of science um, and and magic and religion and how these things were not divided off from one another and it was perfectly respectable to be a magician and suddenly people started pulling these aspects apart and to continue to be interested in magic was suddenly problematic for people and it seemed kind of unfair to me that people have been doing something that was perfectly respectable and then suddenly it became something wrong and something problematic and something to, to, to be very careful about. And um, that was what gave me the idea for the magician's lament, just kind of mourning um, how the thing that they do is suddenly not not permissible anymore. And so I think it was it was particularly um, Sophie's writing that that got me into that comic. But then she sent me all these gorgeous um, images of medieval manuscripts, um, and some of which were on on display in the the Spellbound exhibition and. Um, that was then hugely influential on, on the, the, uh, the style of the comic. For the witchcraft comic, I think just working with Malcolm, who's so great at pulling out brilliant details and finding me picture references. <laughs> so I had some ideas for things, but then he would send me an amazing picture of, of somebody with bulging eyes or, <laughs> or vomiting pins or... Um, yeah, of um, just weird and wonderful and um, very kind of strong images they are relating to the witchcraft. He just was so brilliant at giving me all this detailed information about it and helping me to make the comic as entertaining but also as informative as possible. So it was just a wealth of, of resources. Um, with the Keepers of the House comic, um, Owen and Kerry sent me lots of, I had pictures of the objects and I think those were very inspiring. And also their Concealed Revealed blog um, has got some brilliant stories about objects in it as well. So I, I read a lot of the blog posts and was inspired by that. But I think really those, those artifacts kind of tell those <laughs> stories automatically. So that's how I ended up with that story with the, the objects kind of narrating themselves because they they seem, they seem as if they want to, I think. Yeah, there are various challenges. I think artistically the most difficult thing was translating the medieval manuscripts into comic form because they're so complex. Um, the, I had to try and get across the, the that very full kind of illustrated page of the of the of the manuscripts without making it so dense that you couldn't follow the comic, couldn't follow, follow the story. And then, of course, these objects are extraordinary. They've got gold on them. They've got layers of colour. You know, parchment. It's got particular texture. They're they're just and you see them in the exhibition and they're glowing off the page. <laughs> and I can't produce that in 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 a comic. Um, you know, flat kind of flat colour. So um, that took some work to, to try and find a way of translating it into a comic form that worked on the page. And and I haven't worked with that period of, of drawing before either in a comic. So that was new to me and it just it took a little while to get my head around it, but I'm really glad I did because I'm I'm very happy, you know, with the with Sophie's support how how it turned out in the end. Um, the other challenge for me was with the um, Keepers of the House was just working out what visual style to use because I knew there were objects and there were houses but um, there was no 
the witchcraft one was, was straightforward in the sense that you've got pamphlets and broadsides, you've got woodcuts, you've got this kind of argument style. It, it kind of all fell into place quite readily. But with the, with the objects, I wasn't sure how to draw them, what visual style to use. Um, so I was looking through my book of uh, British folk art and I came across um, these quilts and patchworks as the, the Bellamy quilt and um, this uh, Taylor's coverlet, um, which is held in the National Museum of Wales. And the way that, that um, the patchwork and the objects are kind of held together in blocks and blocks of colour and suddenly I thought yes that's that's what I want to do <laughs> with these objects and that was really satisfying um, once I realised I could do that and then drop the object into place on the page. The most rewarding thing for me is being able to work with experts um, in a subject so um, because you know, I came up with ideas for the comics and I came up with, with narratives and sequences and images. But, and when you're working on your own, you can come up with good ideas and you can work on them over time and refine them. But it's lovely having an expert to send things to and they can go, ah, what about this and what about that? And, you know, you learn. You learn so much when you're working with someone who really understands this material. So, um, that's just great and you end up with a better comic than you would have done if you just worked on it on your own you learn something and you get to collaborate on something and I, I find that um, you know when collaborations go well they're <laughs> wonderful and um, I think all three comics turned out um, much better than they would have done if I just worked on them on my own for my limited knowledge of the subject so um, yeah it was a real opportunity for me it was wonderful I think my understanding is a lot more nuanced now than it was before because of, of working on this material and reading um, some of the original research that went with it. So obviously my, my understanding of the medieval um, magic and cosmos has kind of increased a lot because I, I didn't know a huge amount about it. But um, learning about the early modern witchcraft and just the, the variety of, of awful ways I <laughs> had of pursuing witches and also who could and who 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 could avoid being punished as as being a witch um and and yes how you might escape that fate was was very interesting to learn about it was really fascinating with the the concealed objects just to learn there was a bigger range of objects than i guess i knew about and um, I've been aware of some of the markings um, made in houses, but again, there was a bigger range of the, the marked, those beautiful carved posts I hadn't been aware of. Um, so it was wonderful to work with those and to see them um, when I went around the exhibition. And um, yeah, so it's just, it's made me more interested, to be honest, <laughs> in all of it, and just makes me want to keep, keep learning about it, um, even though I finished working on the comics. So, um, yeah, I've definitely benefited in various ways. Um, I've benefited artistically. It's um, given me, you know, I've worked with new images, new ways of drawing and creating page um, designs, um, working with a different period of historical um, texts and, and artwork. I learned new skills. Um, I started using in design while I was working on the witchcraft comics, so that's um, kind of improving my design skills. So um, it's been great from that point of view. Um, it's also been a great opportunity for me in terms of, of uh, sharing my comics with people, getting them seen and read by people. Um, the comic was shared at the, the conference. Um, held by the team so I think everyone at the conference got <laughs> my comics in their pack so that's great to know lots of people contacted me on social media to show that they have my comics um, uh, my comics being sold in the Ashmolean shop as well which is wonderful um, I was at a comic and zine fair the Bristol comic and zine fair um, just over a month ago 
and someone turned up at my table and said, oh, I've already bought the comics. I've bought them at the Ashmolean. So that was nice. And um, I've also had sales of comics online. And lots have been going to America and Canada. Very keen on, uh, on witchcraft and magic comics <laughs> across the pond. So um, yeah, so that's been great. And it's also leading me into other comics that I want to make in the future. So I was recently um, at a conference in Bristol and I heard a paper by historian Ruth Mullet talking about um, medieval roles um, and um, defensive reading, so protective documents. And uh, there was one of the birthing roles, I think it's in the, in the Spellbound exhibition, she was talking about these and I got quite excited about the thought of creating a comic that is actually a role um, based on, on these artefacts. So I've been talking with Ruth and I think that's, that's possibly going to be one of my next projects. <laughs> and uh, yeah, various other um, historical related things I think are going to come out of this yeah. collaboration. So yeah, um, oh, the frog coffins were discussed in one of our meetings and I haven't been able to get frog coffins out of my head ever since. So expect a, expect a frog coffin comic coming your way sometime soon. Um, I think I've always been a magical thinker. Um, I don't think I ever stopped um, like children are naturally. I think magical thinkers and some people kind of like to think they've become more rational as, as they get older, but I, um, I, I'm not sure that's the case, but I've never made any <laughs> pretense to that. But I, I would say that probably working on this has just encouraged me in my magical thinking. Mm -hmm.